In the beginning of March, 20,000 people gathered in Sochi, Russia for the World Youth Festival. Different topics were discussed there, such as building friendship with other countries. Our President Joe Biden is determined to have hostility to Russia. Ecology, helping kids and the war or the special military operation. Ukraine is absolutely Russia. So today I want to talk with you about all these topics who shared their knowledge with the participants. And there's always the male and the female element. Let's begin. So on the website of the festival it says that this is the largest youth event in the world and its goals are to build a platform for open conversation where everyone can express their point of view and be heard. This is a chance to start a dialogue and search for mutual understanding. The supposed goals for the Russian participants are somewhat similar, but there was something interesting. Gratitude to Russia and its president. 10,000 people from Russia and 10,000 from other countries of the world participated in this event, as well as different Russian public figures, even ministers, other politicians. The festival program included cultural displays, sports, educational events and discussion boards. To become a participant, foreigners and Russians had to write an essay to upload a self-introduction video to the Russian social network VK, where they would answer questions such as how do you see yourself developing professionally in Russia, what skills can you share there, and what Russian or foreign book influenced you. And honestly, I was surprised that delegations from so many countries participated there, because I'm already used to the fact that now Russia has good relationships only with North Korea, but surprisingly there was 189 countries and even very unfriendly. Even the United States participated there and I found a YouTube channel of an American journalist who went to this festival. He's also affiliated with the Russia Today, but Okay, I found a video where he was interviewed by the Russian Первый канал. What is your prime purpose of visiting this festival, your and your delegation? Well, we see it as our responsibility to do what Joe Biden has failed to do. Our President Joe Biden is determined to have hostility to Russia. Uh, he has gone out of his way to escalate international tensions for very selfish and geostrategic reasons. Uh, he's defending an international system, uh, the greed of big banks, corporations, and oil companies that view Russia as a competitor, as a force of opposition. He doesn't represent the real America. The polls show that Americans want peace. Americans want friendship with Russia, but also friendship with, with China, friendship with, uh, with People's Korea. Uh, and Biden's escalation of international tension does not represent what the American people want. I also agree that there must be peace but this person speaks from a completely opposite point of view he thinks that it is russia who keeps peace and is defending its borders and it is the united states the evil biden who sends armory to ukraine and poor russia has to fight also on the youth festival intended to build understanding in friendship there was an exhibition about nato okay we should learn about this this year kind of documents America's support for the Euro Maiden riots that overthrew the democratically elected president of Ukraine. Uh, this is some of the weaponry that was used by the forces that violently toppled Viktor Yanukovych in the 2014 Euro Maiden coup. We talk about foreign meddling. This is what the United States was arming people with in order to overthrow the Ukrainian government. This is an actual U.S. created weapon that was supplied to uh, the Ukrainian military by our tax money. Absolutely crazy. Okay, but maybe I will understand more if I watch the video of this session about the youth role in a struggle for multipolar world. Sounds interesting. The main characteristic of everyone participating here today is that they are optimistic, they are open, they are, uh, they anticipate a bright future. But in the United States, perhaps in the West broadly, there is a overwhelming sense of doom and gloom among the youth. There's a sense of uh, profound cynicism. Speaking of the pandemic, I remember uh, one sentiment that was fairly widespread with the halt of economic activity in April, May of 2020, uh, it was a common feeling to say, looking at the uh, reduced 
uh, carbon footprint from the complete lack of activity. Oh look, Earth can breathe again. How wonderful is this? So young people in the United States are worried about the carbon footprints and the Earth in general. That's why they are negative and tense. While in Russia, young people are smiling, positive, looking confidently into the future. Like, dude, if you go out of the building where this festival was held and speak to young people in Russia, you will see the same level or maybe even a higher level of the doom and gloom that you saw in the United States. Like, speak to the guys who hide from mobilization or to the guys who were tortured at the police station or who are in prison for I don't know, sending an LGBT emoji in a message, or maybe a person who got seven years in jail for replacing price tags in the store, or many, many, many other situations. Like, speak to real people. Okay, but maybe some other speakers will make it more clear. For example, the former president, Dmitry Medvedev. Let's see what knowledge he is about to share with us. Ukraine. Это, безусловно, Россия. Лучшее, что их ожидает, это быть рабами дряхлеющего европейского паноптикума. Играть при дворе роль глухонемой прислуги, которую ежедневно на европейской кухне насилуют за океанский сузерен. Медведев is a former president of Russia and, as someone said, probably a former human. And also the fact that his strongest argument is photoshopping pictures of Western leaders. And I don't want to believe that that people in the crowd were okay with seeing that. And of course, on a festival about building friendships and diplomatic relationships, there were discussion boards about the special military operation where foreign participants and Russian ones learned all the truth. On the discussion session called My Motherland, Volunteers of Donbass, we see foreigners who participated in the military operation on the Russia side. What unites them? Love for Russia and the values it defends. Heroes who sacrifice everything for the sake of justice. Serbia and this is a volunteer from Germany who supplies Russian soldiers with equipment. I know that many people watch me from Germany. Tell me if it's true that all Germans are for Russia. As you know already, Putin is a big specialist in history. So here he explains to the foreign participants why Russia invaded Ukraine. Люди, которые сотрудничали с нацизмом, вот сегодня такие люди на Украине возведены в ранг национальных героев. Они являются символами сегодняшнего украинского государства. Вот с этим мы и боремся. Благодаря таким ребятам, как вот also, there was a concert of the singer of the war, Shaman. But it's not enough, and another session was called Special Military Operation – Two Years That Changed the World. Mankind was confronted with an unprecedented amount of unreliable information and misconceptions about Russia's foreign policy, the harsh military life of people who have risen to defend a free and fair world. And the speaker of that session is especially funny because it is a well-known Russian former YouTuber. His channel was banned by YouTube, Stas Aikak Prosta. He had a popular channel, but now he hosts a show on the Russian TV together with Solovyov, basically the Russian Gables. Stas calls himself a Marxist and heavily supports this war. And I don't know how many foreigners or Russian participants attended this lecture, but 
uh, I found some interesting thing. So there is a blogger from Khabarovsk who participated in the festival and she shared this in her Insta story that she found herself filmed at the lecture of Stas Vasiliev even though that very time she was uh, at another session and here she says I have no idea who is this person but judging by the title it is a lecture about the special military operation I never was involved uh, into politics about these subjects apparently not so many people attended the lecture about the SMO, that's why they had to use such techniques. And also she shared that the organization, the one that held these lectures about the war, frauded people and said them that they will give them gifts for participating in the lecture, but only few people actually got these gifts. And now let's hear out foreign participants. Hello guys! Uh... Hi! What's your name? My name is Melda. My name is Melda. I love VK player. What are your impressions of Russia? Uh, my first impression of Russia, I really like the city, uh, the organization of the things, uh, a higher quality of education, lectures, conference. We have an opportunity to know that Russian people were different with different places in the world. So we get their experience like you, a certain experience, talking about a little bit the program, talking about a little bit about our culture and the, this is amazing. Well, I agree with this because I'm sure that a lot of people found new friendships, got new emotions, all that stuff. My name is Saif. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Iraq. Volunteers, they are really amazing, they are good, good people and generous and I like the, so many gifts and souvenirs and uh, most likely what I do like personally is the AI and the technology and the development. But then this guy from Russia asked them what do you think about Russia and Putin? What do you think about Russian President Putin? <laughs> the president Putin is a good person, he is a good president. He makes like everything so that they can feel well. So he, I really appreciate him and I really like your his uh, debates and other stuff. Putin never participates in debates. Like when there were Putin's elections in uh, 2018, they did not only make a cheat show out of it, they also said that the president will not participate in the debates, even though he must because he is a possible candidate because he is busy. What debate, guys? He is going to rule Russia for the sixth or seventh term, I don't remember. He is working very hard to protect his country, uh, to take care about his people. He is a great person because he made all of this. Uh, he is uniting people. He really looks for peace and he can take care of family. He really looks for peace and he can take care of family. Yes, a person who kills so many young people and again, if you speak with the rest of the Russian population, you will see how many wives cannot see their husbands and now there is no information when they will get back. The only response that the wives manage to get the mobilized soldiers will stay at the front until the end of the war. How a president who cares about the family can uh, increase the crime rate because now all the uh, Wagner soldiers and uh, former prisoners will return to the hometowns and kill people again and they already do that. There are a lot of cases. The bastion of traditional values. Thanks to our mother and our father when we come into the world because there's no other way even despite the modern technology. And there's always the male and the female element. So, on one hand, I am happy for these young people from other countries and from Russia who got the opportunity to visit this festival for free, to meet each other, to get this new knowledge and emotions. And I'm happy for them because I know how useful it was for myself. For example, there was a, a forum for young leaders from other countries in Khabarovsk in 2018 and there I was an attaché 
for a delegation from India and I enjoyed a lot. It was one of my first times to meet with foreigners and it was so stressful but also it was incredibly useful for me and later I added this to my CV which gave me the opportunity to apply to other events like this. But on the other hand, I cannot look at this festival and not feel disheartened. Like, I know what is happening to my country. It is like a feast during the plague, like there is the war going on and Russia still bombs Ukraine these days. And at the same time, I see this holiday, this festival of youth, but now it's rather the festival of useful idiots. I'm sorry, but this is how it looks for me. The Russian government is promoting its point of view. And don't get me wrong, I don't have an issue with the festival itself. Any country can promote its interests using soft power. But my concern is in the fact that one of the goals was to foster friendship. But how can you achieve that when you antagonize the West and normalize the Russian military aggression? This doesn't improve relationships in any way. The very fact that we strive to achieve that will make the world more transparent, more fair, more sustainable, balanced and democratic. So this was my video, write in the comments what do you think about this festival, do you know people who participated there or maybe you yourself took part in this event. So please share your impressions. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Goodbye, пока-пока!